I've always been into business since I was a kid, since I was five years old, growing up in the Bronx, fishing bowls out of sewers with the coat hangers and selling them. And my first job was at IBM selling computers. And um, uh, after I graduated from Cornell as a double E and I got an MBA. In college, I played in a rock and roll band. I, I was a really good keyboard player back in the early 60s. So while I was at IBM after a couple of years, uh, I had ants in my pants where I wanted to quit and, and just go out and play again. And at that time, the biggest hit was uh, the Rolling Stones' Satisfaction. And everybody wanted to have a fuzz tone. But Maestro, who made the fuzz tones, couldn't make them fast enough. So I hooked up with a guy on 48th Street who wanted me to come in with him, the, uh, a technician named Bill Burko. He was making them one at a time. So he says, come on in with me. and we'll, we'll, we'll make a ton of these. So I said, okay. Well, I was still working at IBM. So, and, and, he, and by this time, Jimi Hendrix was hot, who happened to be a, a personal friend of mine. We, we hung out a lot uh, before he went back to England, and we just talked band talk. So now I want to design a distortion-free sustainer so uh, musicians could sound like Hendrix, you know, that long sustain, he would just vibrate his finger and ooh. So he, anyway, so he decided to name them Foxy Ladies. So that that's how I got into it. Uh, and electromonics didn't exist at that time. Al Drange, the founder of Guild Guitars, I, f I forget how he found out about it, and he wanted to buy all of them. Right. Guild, Guild Guitars made guitars, but he, he, he sold these foxy ladies uh, that, that I made. I'd bring over two, three hundred about every week, week or two. I, 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 to Guild in Hoboken, they'd write me out a check and then I'd go back to work at IBM. Later on, when I did the Big Muff, which was a different circuit and better than the, much better than the original Foxy Ladies, uh, he continued to buy some of them branded as Foxy Ladies. And um, so I hooked up with this uh, 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 inventor at Bell Labs who has about 70, 80 pioneer patents from everything, from missile defense systems to something that revolutionized the wireless telephone industry. But anyway, I went out to his place to test uh, the latest prototype and plugged into it. You know, the prototype was in a box like this and plugged into it was a little box. I says, what's that? He says, well, I didn't realize the guitar put out such a small signal. So I built this little booster. So in those days, this is 1968, all the amps, you could turn them up to 10, they wouldn't distort, you know, because like, they had all this headroom. That's the way amps were made. So, so when I, with this little box, you plug it into the amp, all of a sudden it get a hell of a lot louder. And if you cranked it up some more, then it put it into overdrive. And that was actually the first overdrive unit and, and that's where I founded Electromonics on. I, it was a simple product, just one transistor, the LPB1, linear power booster. And, uh, and we still sell, you know, thousands of them today. And that, that was the first product. And uh, I started selling a mail order. They picked up. And then I hired the technician from this place that made the Foxy Ladies. I got a small place. And um, and started building them there, and then realized I had to make a decision and I quit IBM, and that was how it started. I um, when I had the LPB one in that small little chassis, I wanted to come out with some other stuff that would fit into that same box. So I came out with the Screaming Bird treble booster, the. And we were the first company that came out with crazy names that will make your guitar screech like a harpsichord who's whipped instead of plucked. The mole bass booster and the 
and the Muff Fuzz, which was a mild overdrive. I like that very mild, just a touch of, of a distortion. So I called that the Muff Fuzz. So then later, when I came out with the Big Muff, I wanted to capitalize on the name recognition of Muff. And so I call it Big Muff. You know, of course, it has a double meaning. And that we still sell thousands of them a month. All sorts of varieties of different versions of our Big Muff. And um, it's one of our biggest groups. Uh, to me, they're all fuzzes. They're all overdrives or distortions. Now, years later, the people, uh, purists, started to separate. No, this is overdrive. This is fuzz. This, to, to me, <laughs> they're all distortion units. Mm -hmm.